Hey guys, it's Jonathan. Slow Friday afternoon, I'm just messing around. I put up InventSense, a stock that I used to trade. I noticed that it was on the screens, on the scanners for the day as far as the biggest movement. So INVN, right now it's up 28%. All of a sudden it jumped in the middle of the day. So I'm going through the process that I always go through after I see something like this happen. And I thought, wow, what a good video this would be because I'm sitting here doing this and I honestly, I just don't think other people can do this. I'm just gonna flat out say it. I know there's a lot of people on the internet offering advice. I think a lot of people just do it flat out wrong. It doesn't make sense to me. So let me show you what I do. I see in Vincent, it's up 28%, okay? Put it on a shorter term. We can see that it jumped in the middle of the day. So right away, it jumped in the middle of the day. There's news. This is not an earnings-based move, okay? So the first thing that I do is I go to Twitter. Twitter is going to give me the real-time news feed. Search Twitter. I plug in in Vincent's. Because I'm going to use Twitter because I don't really care what all these guys are saying about it. I want to find the news. And so I'm going to use Twitter to get a link to whatever news that I want. But as you scroll down, here's the news. The reports that Japan's TDK Corp wants to acquire Invencents. Okay? But if you keep scrolling down, all these hobbyists, <laughs> let, let's say, all they're talking about, all they're talking about, the hobbyists, the gurus, Oh, I see resistance in the invent sense. I see support. Let me tell you something. Stock just jumped from 850 up to 11. It's up 30%. Support and resistance, they are absolutely irrelevant right now. All that matters is what the heck's going on. So we got to drill into an article to find out what's really going on. So let's do that. Let's go to a reputable news service. Okay, I'm on Reuters. They have an article about InventSense. And let's figure out what's going on. So this company wants to buy. The rumor is they're looking to buy them for $12 a share. Okay, it's still a rumor. It's not out yet. Usually when these things happen, most likely it's going to go through, right? There's a reason that it came out. It's not just they're saying a rumor. It's almost get to $12. But now we want to look at why. Why are they buying in Vincent's? Okay, yes, they, they are a supplier of Apple, one of thousands. But what they want, guys, is they want the technology. In Vincent's designs, gyroscopes. Okay, uh, those gyroscopes for your smartphone, they calculate motion, ena enabling augmented reality, right? We know this is a hot space. We've talked about it before, longer term menu, uh, members with Pokemon Go and Nintendo. So where everybody messes up is everybody rushes to InventSense to trade the stock, to trade the options, to try to guess where it's going to go to, to try to guess where it's going to open on Monday. But that's wrong. That's not the place where we want to go. We want to go where everybody else is not going. So what I did InventSense designs gyroscopes. Let's start looking at the gyroscope market. After doing a little bit of research, I found out, which I just learned, we're not really looking for gyroscopes. We're looking for MEMS sensor. Okay? M-E-M-S sensor. Some of you technologists out there are, know a whole bunch more than I do about this. I'm just learning as I'm going. But now, if I scroll down, in this article that I found just by Googling. Now I want to see, you can see the explosion of the market. And now I want to see the biggest companies within this market. And if I scroll down here, we can see the top suppliers. Number three is Invencents. So when you see a stock like this jump 30%, you don't want to go Invencents. The news is out. Everybody's already going there. We want to be creative. Take a step back. Think about what other companies are going to be affected. STM, microelectronics. Knowles, 
Bosch, all of these. These are the companies that we want to be researching. So then I go through each one of these companies. I want to see which ones are traded in the US because a lot of them are going to be in Germany or, or Japan or China, wherever. But we need to find stuff for me. I'm in the States. It's easiest to trade listed stocks. So I start looking into STM Electronics. Is it public? Knowles. Is it public? In Vincent's, is it correlated to Knowles? Is it correlated to STM Electronics? Why are they going to go after In Vincent's rather than going after STM Electronics? Well, In Vincent's is a $1 billion company. STM Electronics, I just found out, is a $9 billion company. Knowles, it turns out, is a $1 billion company. Both of these are actively traded. So now we want to go look at STM Electronics. I always go to Google Finance. You can go anywhere for this kind of information because I always want to see the market cap because I know a $50 billion market cap company is not getting bought out, okay? It's probably just one of the many things that they do. STM, this is the ADR. It's got a market cap of 9.9 .9 billion. Pretty juicy. What about Knowles? which is going to be KN. Be careful, there's two KNs, which tricked me a little bit. Knowles Corp. Market cap of 1.56. It's the same thing as Invencents. If I go look at Invencents, up 28%, market cap is a billion. Okay. Where we want to be looking in Vincent's, if it gets bought out at 12, that's great. If it doesn't, it's going to go right back down to 8, and the rumor is just going to be a rumor, right? So risk-reward, that doesn't make a whole bunch of sense to me. But by finding out what gets pushed and pulled, right, every single person on Twitter, on stock twits, if you scroll down, they're all talking about you know, their prediction of what the price action is going to do. Is it going to break out? That's, that's nonsense, guys. Absolute nonsense. We want to be looking not at event sense. We want to be looking at the two competitors in the space. So let me go to a chart. Now I got you all on a chart, and I just overlap them. Put them on percentage basis because I, I, I want to confirm that they're correlated. I want to make sure that KN, Knowles, is really the Knowles that I'm looking at, right? Because if it's not correlated at all, if the charts look completely different, it's going to be a red flag. I'm going to go back and do my research. Okay. So STM has been the strongest of the bunch. But again, $9 billion market cap. The orange is going to be in Vincent's. You can see it was inexpensive relative to Knowles, at least going back on a weekly chart. And this is the big jump. But maybe there's a reason that Knowles was more expensive. Also, Knowles doesn't have a cap, right? And what, by that I mean, it doesn't have a ceiling. So in Vincent's INVN, it very well might have a ceiling of $12 that it can never go any higher because it's gonna get acquired and then it's gonna fall into the acquiring company. But this is the kind of research that we wanna do. And this is the real benefit to having somebody like me on your side who's constantly looking for different trades, but we're looking at them for a very, very specific reason. So I was just doing this and I was going through Twitter and listening to all the comments and a whole bunch of these gurus on there talking about support and resistance. And I'm just shaking my head thinking, you know what? We got to get this message out because doesn't this make more sense? Can't you step back and say, you know what? If everybody's running to invent sense because it's up 30%, they're all late to the party. They're all trying to buy it at 1060 and sell it at 1070. Okay? No, thank you. That's not the risk reward that I want. I want to go and try to buy something and try to get 20 or 30% while risking not a lot of money through the options market. Being able to express our opinion in the most efficient way. So, I wanted to get this out right away before the close. 
Uh, for the Sunday week ahead, I'm going to drill way deeper into this story, and I'm going to come up with some suggestions on how we can play the, uh, the MEMS sensor market going forward. Okay? These are some of my favorite trades, and they're some of my favorite trades because everybody runs, and they're all running to the same place, and I think they're all running to the same place. Well, we're being smart. We're saying, you know what? We don't all need to run to InventSense. We're not trying to just buy the stock at 1050 and get out of 1070, risking down to $8. That's, that doesn't make sense to me. What we're looking to do is say, okay, somebody just got purchased in the MEM sensor space, in the gyroscope space. Who's next? Because what's gonna happen is once InventSense gets bought out, all those people are on Twitter are going to start looking at, okay, who's next? And then they're going to finally find Knowles and they're going to finally find STM. Okay. Knowles is up 13 cents today. STM is down a little bit today. That just shows how nobody's looking at the biggest competitor of a rumor that's throwing a stock up 30%. If once it becomes news, INVN is up 50%. Because it's going to go right to $12, the cash buyout price. Okay? Hope this helps. What I wanted to show is the process that I was going through I was, as I was sitting here doing the research. So Sunday night, I'll expand on this further. I'll tell you exactly what I'm looking at, exactly what options we're going to be looking at. Let's try to make some money, guys. Hope you liked it. I think this is a pretty fun video. Thanks, guys.